Welcome to Vinyl Night, powered by Entertalk Radio, the groove of the music industry. I'm your host, John Robinson, coming to you live from Vinyl Night Studios in beautiful Thousand Oaks, California. This show features some of the best and most influential people in the music industry. Each week, we will feature an intimate, candid, and in-depth one-on-one with all the musicians, recording engineers, singers, and producers that have changed the world. Before we get started, I couldn't do this without my sponsors, DW Drums, Peisty Cymbals, Remo Drumheads, Regal Tip Drumsticks and Brushes, Blue Microphones, Zoom Cameras, LP Percussion, Roland, Oralex, and Source Connect Pro. You can also download our app, Enter Talk Radio app, on your iPhone or Android when you're on the go. This gentleman is like, like I'm just so excited to, to have him on my show. Dean Parks is an American session guitarist and record producer from Fort Worth, Texas. Park was a, Parks is a member of the North Texas State 1 O'Clock Lab Band before moving to Los Angeles to work with Sonny and Cher in 1970. In the 80s, early 80s, Parks was the founding member of the jazz fusion band Konyania. Parks is best known for his many contributions to a lot of albums. Steely Dan, Michael Jackson, Lyle Lovett, Ricky Lee Jones, Joe Sample, Tony Braxton, David Foster... Joan Baez, Crosby and Nash, Madonna, Stevie Wonder, Barbara Streisand, Roberto Carlos, Elton John, Celine Dion, The Monkees, America, Diana Ross, George Benson, Rod Stewart, Randy Travis, Bob Seger, Billy Joel, Neil Diamond, Michael Buble, Barry Manilow, David Lee Roth, Paul Simon, Darley pa- Do- Dolly Parton, sorry, uh, Kenny Loggins, Tom Scott, B.B. King, Dusty Springfield, Johnny Rivers, James Taylor, Carol King, Randy Newman, Joe Cocker, the Gypsy Queens, Herbie Hancock, Sting, Andrea Bocelli, Billy Joel, Paul Simon, Bob Dylan, and Bread. Dean Parks is also featured on Victor Krause's album, too. He co-wrote uh, Dancing Machine for the Jacksons and Michael Jackson. That intro song, All Night, All Right, by the great Shaka Khan. During the 70s, Parks teamed up with Bread for their Lost Without Your Love reunion tour and replaced founding guitarist uh, Jimmy Griffin. Then he became officially uh, with Bread with David Gates and then joined David Crosby and Graham Nash. Recent live and TV include uh, James Taylor, Gloria Estefan, David Foster, Carol King, Quincy Jones, The Oscars, Emmy Awards, Grammy Awards, Library of Congress, Kennedy Center Honors, and Austin City Limits. I'm sure you have a clone, Dean. Ladies and gentlemen, a true musician's musician, legend Dean Parks. Welcome to Final Night. <laughs> Thanks, John. A long intro. Yeah, I know. I, I had to build it up, you know, because you're, <laughs> you're an up-and-coming guy. <laughs> you patted my resume there. Well, I, well. I, I don't, I don't, th- I don't think so. Yeah, well, not really. I've Welcome been around aboard. a long time, so I got to play with all those great artists. It's been great. Well, you know, it just it it it, it shows in in your maturity and your playing and what you contribute to records. And you know, like I do with um, all my guests, I like to talk about young Dean at this point. And um, you know, I, I I've done a lot of research on you, and, and and you just never cease to amaze me. But what was your first instrument? My first instrument was a uh, steel guitar, and it was, you know, just a, not, not, not a pedal steel, just a regular steel when I was five years old. So that was, that was the you, first. Did you, did your parents bring it home to you, or you just... Well, well my parents uh, took me to these, uh, you know, every Friday night in Fort Worth, uh, all the great country and western artists would come through on, on their tours, uh, in Fort Worth on Friday and Dallas on Saturday, and I got to see the Fort Worth shows, and I just wanted to do what the backup musicians were doing. I, I wanted to make some sounds, so I kept bugging them until they got me lessons. And hands were too small for a regular guitar, so they put me on the on the steel guitar. Well, and, do you uh, still I, have that? I don't, but I, I found one just like it, and I found an amp just like what I had, um, and uh, so I do. I could duplicate the the magic if I needed to. <laughs> well, and and you do. Let's trust me. Um, <laughs> were were your uh, did did your parents play instruments? Uh, my mom played by ear, um, piano by ear, and harmonica by ear. My dad didn't do, do any musical stuff. 
I think my grandparents were music directors of their church uh, years before my mom came up. My mom was the youngest in a family of nine, so they weren't into music when she came up. But we didn't take it seriously as a profession. It was just something I did for fun. I had a lot of fun playing all kinds of music. And since I kind of only did it for fun and, and had a group that did it for fun, we learned all the instrumentals of the day. Back when I learned real guitar at age 11, uh, you know, I just learned all of those Dwayne Eddy and Ventures and uh, Link right. Ray. Um, all, 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 all of the instrumental stuff is what I really liked, but, but I liked all styles. And uh, doing it by fun, uh, for fun, you could do all styles because you're not, uh, you know, you're not defined by a group you're in or anything like that. Was that was that your first uh, band when you were 11 years old? Well, let's see. I guess we I got in a band, and I'm not even sure how I got a hookup with a band because we one one guy lived in Burleson, one guy lived in Cleburne. Uh, these are you know about uh, 40 minutes away from Fort Worth. I lived in Fort Worth. Uh, but somehow I got hooked up with this group and we would meet, uh, every week in a different backyard and, uh, and play for fun. All the neighbors would come around and listen, uh, you know, plug our amps up and get back backyard concerts every week. And so that's, that's how we learned all the songs and, uh, got to be a band and later started doing sock hops and, um, and, you know, fraternity gigs and actually started making some money with the thing. But uh, it was it was a great group. I actually held on to that group even through college, even as I was learning jazz uh, on other instruments and stuff. I still uh, held to that group, which was called the Crowd Plus One, and uh, the Naturals originally is what it was called. And so we did did uh, did a lot of playing and uh, learned a lot of music. And I was glad to be in a rock group. Uh, during my jazz phase, because rock and roll got real interesting in the 60s with Hendrix, Cream, oh, yeah. and Birds, Beatles. Uh, fantastic time to uh, to be aboard uh, the rock the rock thing. Right. That, the band Crowd Plus One, though, uh, morphed into some other band, correct? That's right. Uh, they uh, uh, became Blood Rock, or the, the core of that band became the core of a group called Blood Rock. Um, I think the guy that uh, produced Grand Funk Railway uh, produced uh, an album or two on them. But uh, I had my sights set on L.A., so I, I, I dropped out of the group and um, kind of got more into my uh, jazz studies in, uh, in Denton, you know, in North Texas. Right, and you at uh, so all the way through high school, were you doing um, like the jazz bands in high school with concert band, or just uh, or none of that? Uh, all of that, actually. I was in the concert band, and uh, and I started in the jazz band as guitar because there was a Peter Gunn sounding chart copy of Peter right. Gunn. It had no it had no guitar, and I told them they needed a guitar, and I, so I joined the band on guitar, but then. Uh, Started. I wanted to get into the regular band, and uh, I learned woodwinds, and ended up playing uh, lead alto in that band and writing a bunch of arrangements. You know, there were a lot of contests back then, so you could get these stock charts that everyone had, or you could, uh, you, you know, Lon Price across town in Arlington Heights uh, would be writing arrangements for his band, and so I started. I figured I, I could learn to do that, so I did that. And that was a good way to learn to wow. read music, actually, is to learn writing at the same time. Great way to learn it from both directions. Right. So you did you you started on clarinet, though, then, then moved into alto, right? Yeah, that's right. I, I got into band on clarinet and uh, and then found out that it was similar to, to alto and tenor. And uh, so I kind of added those in as I went. And I don't know how you, uh, it's like, you know, me sticking with piano and drums was very difficult. So, I mean, you, you were, you know, you had something going on in all 10 fingers, dude. <laughs> I guess so. But, uh, you know, the woodwinds, I say it, that's a great way to learn classical music and, um, and jazz. You know, it's, uh, in a way it's a simpler system, but you get that breath. Um, it's great for your phrasing, you know, when, even when I take it back to guitar, uh, what I learned as in phrasing and uh, all that kind of consistency of uh, 
you know, short notes and long notes, the thing you would do to lead a section if you're a lead alto player, it, it really transferred back to uh, reading on guitar because I could sort of uh, blend in with uh, other orchestral session sections from experience. And if, if not experience on the guitar, at least musical experience from having done it on a woodland. Wow, you know, I, I wish a lot of guitar players would, uh, would, you know, adhere your advice because a lot of cats are stepping on it. Listen, we will be right back with legend Dean Parks. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. Have you ever wondered what it's like to record on a Grammy award-winning album? Have you ever wondered what it's like to play in front of a stadium crowd? Have you ever wondered what it's like to be on a world tour? I'm Jackie Bertoni, and I've played with the who's who in the music industry, and I've toured the world. Come join my world behind the velvet rope and get into the groove on Jackie's Groove. Live 2 p.m. Mondays and available 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on InterTalk Radio. Each week I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit MoesGuitars.com or their Facebook page. M-O-Z-E Guitars.com. 619-698-1185. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on InterTalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real-time ADR work, remote recording and overdubbing, and it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high-quality audio and video connection over the Internet for all of your production needs. We are back and talking with legend, musician, producer, Dean Parks. And you were talking about, all right, so leaving Fort Worth, 
uh, and uh, going up to uh, North Texas. T- tell me how that happened. Well, uh, our band director in uh, in high school was very aware. He had friends that were studio players in Dallas. Quite an active studio scene in the in the fifties and sixties, uh, and uh, they were aware of North Texas, and uh, we were all jazz novices in our band, and he kind of arranged for us to go up and hear the band a few times, North Texas Band, which was stellar, a big band, uh, and has been for, had been for years. So I knew I wanted to go there. It's only an hour away from Fort Worth, so it was, it was an easy, it's, you know, it was an easy choice in a way, even, even though I majored in math, they had a good math department there, and I knew I wanted to be doing music, even if I didn't make music a career you know i hadn't really decided to do that yet but you, but you had been professionally gigging for a long time had you had, had you been in the studio uh, up to this point uh let's see in high school um, well let's see I, I can't remember the years exactly but i kind of did some recording with that band uh, that i had been with all these years we started we started singing when the Beatles uh, came along and started right. writing such interesting songs. So we started vocals. Anyway, uh, we, we recorded a little bit. Uh, T-Bone Burnett uh, produced some stuff with us. Um, so I got, you know, I got into a studio uh, a little bit from those early days. And then uh, gradually uh, Dallas, uh, which was the real studio scene, when I got to North Texas, they came aware of me and hired me for because uh, they needed guys that were had rock roots on guitar, and all the reading guitar players, almost industry wide, were jazz roots, uh, right. which is nothing you know nothing against that. Other than the guys that came up with jazz generally don't have a like a blues set up on their guitar, and. Um, you know, are coming at it from a foreign viewpoint, and I came at it from a home viewpoint. You know, that's what I learned on is Chuck Berry and Link Ray and uh, right. all that stuff. So, well, that, ref- so, so I got ref- it. I got reflects. into studios. I'm oh, sorry, what? No, it reflects Dean on on you know on, on your Texas roots, and then you know, obviously, your your taste is just bar none. Oh, thank you. But so you're a math major, and you haven't really committed to being a music major. Uh, when did you get in the one o'clock band, or, or you were in several bands at uh, North Texas, and now, of course, it's called UNT. Yeah, I was in several bands. I knew I wanted to be in one band on guitar, and another band on uh, sax. And so, uh, basically, the way you do it in those places, because there's you know six or seven big bands guys from all over the country coming, new batch every semester. And so you're trying to claw your way up to a higher band. Uh, and so I uh, alternated. I, I was in guitar on one band, and then I would just be on either lead alto or jazz tenor because I liked both of those, either one of those. I kind of tr- traded back and forth every semester, so I'd play one half the semester lead alto and one half the semester on Jazz tenor in as high up as I could, uh, as my tryout would take me. And uh, at, and at one point uh, there was a vacancy in uh, lead alto, and uh, I, uh, I I made the audition, so I got to be lead alto <laughs> on the one o'clock that way. That's fantastic, and 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 I'm told that I mean you you still have friends. Uh, maybe tell everybody some of those bandmates that were in that one o'clock band with you. Oh, well, Tom Malone from the David Letterman band. Uh, Lou Marini uh, was, I was not in a band. He was slightly ahead of me, but uh, he was a big, I, I, was, I was, he was my idol uh, uh, ahead of me. Uh, and he moved to New York and became a session musician there. He was in the Saturday Night Live original band. Um, Gary Grant, um, great lead trumpet player in L.A. Um, Dave Hungate. Uh, bass player, um, who's also a trombone player, by the way. Um, gee, who am I? 
who am I missing? Matt Dutton on drums, Tom Canning on right. keyboard, uh, Bruce Fowler on uh, trombone. That's right. Uh, Bruce was there too, and and Gary, right? Gary Grant. No, uh, no, Gary Denton. Oh, Gary Denton. Yeah, he was there. We were roommates. I got to listen to him practice drums, which was actually the way he did it was really uh, very pleasant. He was a great drummer, taking from Ed Sof, who I did not get to play with. He was the drummer in the in the bands ahead of me, but what a fantastic uh, uh, arrange uh, drum arranger. I mean, he was a great player, but man, he the way he would arrange his big band fills were just great. By the way, uh, he was my guest last week and uh, tell, told me to tell you send send you know his love to you. So oh, uh, says, same, hey. same 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 to him. All right. Oh man, so so you you, you went through uh, you know in NTSU, and then you get this offer to move to L.A. Well, you know it's almost like you you know your big break. Well, it was the offer was to play with Sonny and Cher on the road. They were resurrecting their career they'd already had their arc as a 60s group and they were coming back as sort of a supper club group with you know big band book uh you know at fairmont hotels in vegas and that kind of a thing and they needed a guitar player and i uh came on and uh, and did that for a month or so and talked them into we all everybody in the rhythm section of the one o'clock knew that we wanted to move to la so um i uh convinced them to give that band a try, and that became the, the core rhythm section, and we all moved to L.A. Uh, while being on the road, you know, about half the time with Sunny and Cher. They didn't have a full schedule. And so uh, made the move while we were on the road, and uh, in surprise, they got a, t- a six-show TV, summer TV show, and insisted right. the Sonny Bono insisted the band get auditions. And anyway, I, that was a, just a great opportunity to... to uh, be auditioned into a weekly hour long variety TV show where you had to do all the music for the hour show in th- in three hour pre records. And uh, it, it was a great first big gig in LA. Was, and, was, uh, what, who was the rhythm section in, in, uh, at that time once you got off the road for that band? Um, for the Sonny and Cher show? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure. I was, I was sort of the only one of the band that was really that interested in being, uh, being on the TV show. I knew I wanted to do studio work and those guys were, wanted to be more artists in a band kind of a thing. So I, right. I, 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 uh, grabbed it. Um, so I don't remember exactly the rhythm section that, that we started out with. I know Matt Betton played drums. I'm part of it. The, the rhythm section was Matt Betton, Dave Hungate, Tom Canning were the other guys oh. in the rhythm section. Gotcha. And uh, so that was the core of the, the group that came to L.A. Uh, uh, Hungate wanted to stay and finish out his semester. We uh, bolted in the middle of a semester and uh, got Dave McDaniel to, to uh, come with us on that road tour wow that's that's unbelievable is it, it did you meet jeff uh shortly thereafter uh yeah i met him um i think keltner sent him as a sub because he was trying to help jeff out with some real gigs and uh so i met jeff uh you know on one of his first sessions i guess and played with him a few times before he became Part of the rhythm section of the uh, Sonny and Cher uh, oh, okay. band, because they kind of came into the show first and then became part of the traveling rhythm section. After that, I believe Marty Page had become the music director. Uh, Jimmy Dale was the original, but uh, Marty Page became the third year, maybe became the music director and brought David Page and his group, which is basically when I say his group, the guys he sort of preferred to play with, which was uh, um, Hungate on bass and uh, Jeff on drums. Wow. God, I mean, I remember tuning into that show and saying, you know, watching this and going, man, this is an unbelievable band. Yeah, it was really pretty, pretty good for the time. We covered a lot of territory in a, in, you know, in a three hour session. 
Well, did, now, did you start working and branching out with other people? They found out that you were in town? Yeah, you know, uh, the commodity of a rock, able, and country guitar player that can actually read music was really uh, uh, not that common to find all those things. And so uh, word travels fast when, the, you know, there was lots, as you recall, from slightly later time when you got into it, uh, there was a lot going on and a lot of uh, sessions that were going to happen at a particular time, and they just get the best band they could scrape together for that time. And it was just almost more work than there were people to, to fill it. So uh, lots of uh, last-minute calls that I would get and uh, recommend from other uh, players and so forth. Right, Dean, hold that thought. We will be right back with the great Dean Parks. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you've found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit moesguitars.com or their Facebook page. M-O-Z-E guitars.com. 619-698-1185. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Have you ever wondered what it's like to record on a Grammy award-winning album? Have you ever wondered what it's like to play in front of a stadium crowd? Have you ever wondered what it's like to be on a world tour? I'm Jackie Bertoni, and I've played with the who's who in the music industry, and I've toured the world. Come join my world behind the velvet rope and get into the groove on Jackie's Groove. Live 2 p.m. Mondays and available 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Has your business been appified? Are you tired of doing marketing that doesn't deliver results? Mobile apps build loyalty and quality retention. Your app from UPG Mobile puts your business on their mind and at their fingertips. UPG Mobile will give you a custom app highlighting how you are unique, targeting your message, and improving your open rates. Appify your business and amplify your presence with your customers at upgmobilemarketinggroup.com. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear.
We are back with legend Dean Parks. You know, Dean, I, I, I researched you a long time. First of all, I've known you a long time and played with you, you know, just, I don't know, over 32 years probably. But <laughs> yeah. when, I started res- <laughs> when I started researching, you're not, you know, there's a lot of cats that are one-dimensional, and you are the exact opposite of that. You can blend and do everything musically, and, um, and it's just an honor to play with you. But tell us, you know, tell me about when you met Donald Fagan and Walter Becker. Well, um, I think that came about through Michael Mardian. Uh, he was uh, doing, I guess he got, at some point they decided to use studio players, and the point was pretzel logic uh, for most of their uh, recording. And, uh so I was a part of the group that had been working with Michael Marty and, uh, a lot. Uh, they wanted Chuck Rainey. They knew that. So uh, Chuck Rainey, uh, Jim Gordon, me, Michael Marty, and I think Rich, Rick Derringer played on a couple of uh, the tracking sessions. But we just uh, – so I met them on that um, album, and uh, and then they – you know, very interesting stuff, of course. And then we heard how it came out at the end. It was fantastic. And uh, so that was always something to look forward to. If it, if you get the call, you could never tell those guys because they, they loved hearing all the various approaches that all the different studio players would uh, give their music. So it was uh, it, it, it was a fun time. And we, we knew that even though it was going to be a little bit of uh, – a tough task to finally get a take because they were so exacting. And, of course, everyone that was working for them was, were exacting, too. We all wanted it to be great because we knew it was going to be great in the end. And it was fun, a fun, fun project to be on. Well, you contributed heavily, in my opinion, and I think the, the whole world's opinion, uh, to you know their, their final product. Well, thanks, uh you know, a lot of a lot of their parts were uh, pre-existing on their demos, or they had it figured out what they wanted. And, uh, other parts where they they just like to see what would unfold. Uh, you know, that every song was a different task for those guys. Very interesting to work for. Well, I mean, when you did that solo right on our intro right there with Haitian divorce, I mean, you know, I've heard stories about um, you know uh, Walter adjusting it later. Uh, you know, quickly, how did that go down? Um, I did the, the the tracking part of it with the little reggae part, the, you know, the, the little off beam kitten. That was because I walked into a studio where I knew they were recording. I was at, you know, over at ABC, ABC which became Lion Share. I was in one studio, they were in another, and I was just visiting during a break. And they were at a break, too, and they said, hey, you want to play rhythm on uh, this next tune? And Bernard Purdy was on drums. That's the first I'd met him. Right. Bernard, uh, anyway, Larry Carlton was the one doing the tracking session, but uh, he said, play my guitar. So I I played the rhythm part on that. Then they called me back to do a solo, uh, kind of all the way through. Um, and Walter said, well, you know, we want this to be through a talk box. Uh, so, you know, you can do the talk box part if you want to, or if you want to just play a straight guitar solo pass, and I'll, I'll do the talk box part of it later. That's what happened. Wow. I chose option B. So they, they knew funny. enough about the, what they wanted to know that they wanted that quirky little sound in there. So I, I guess knowing that it was going to be that, uh, I, you know, I kind of played it in a, in a way that, uh, you know, would allow that little joke to come off, I guess you could say. Right. Well, it's a funky joke. It's, it's smoking, yeah. dude. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> Hey, hey, what's it? So you started then getting paired on sessions in Los Angeles with other guitar players. And I mean, you were on like, you know, they would pair you. Like, can you tell us uh, some of the, the, the guys that you were, you know, recorded with simultaneously? Well, uh, that first session um, with Sonny and Cher show, of course, you know, here they are auditioning the road band guy. You know, you know what that's like, the. The mistrust of the road band by studio professionals <laughs> is uh, it's a bad rap, you know, because there are a lot of incredible road musicians. And anyway, long story short, it was a two-guitar band, 
and they hired Larry to be Guitar One on that first show, just to sort of spy on me and see whether I was going to be able to cut it or not. Uh, wow. And he gave him the thumbs up on that, and he started recommending me as second guitarist whenever he had a situation come up. His career was he'd been going for a few years already, and um, uh, and he began, you know, it recommended me for his second guitar. So we got paired on a lot of stuff, uh, like that early Johnny River stuff. It was usually the two of us on guitar, and. Uh, um, Steely Dan stuff, we only, they only used one guy per instrument on their tracking session, so we never got to play together on those, although we ended up overdubbing. Anyway, that's, uh, that was one thing. Another, another pairing was uh, Fred Tackett. Uh, I would recommend him uh, if they wanted an acoustic player with, uh, and with me on electric because uh, I knew that Fred had the acoustic thing covered pretty nicely, so we... Right. We did a little together, um, and I don't know about other pairings. What were you What were you thinking of? Well, I mean, did did you actually? I mean, I know you know more recent uh, tracks. You've been paired with Paul Jackson, but I mean, did you, did you go do any stuff with Graydon or um, Tedesco or? Yeah, well, Luke, yeah, Luke uh, Third. T- uh, t- Tedesco, uh, I met uh, and played with a few times, and he was. Uh, he was uh, very generous, uh, you know, in his uh, support of me when I first came in. And uh, um, all the Motown stuff that I played on um, usually had four guitars. And so I was part, became part of that team. But usually that was David T. Walker and me and uh, maybe Arthur Wright, uh, Arthur Adams. Right. Um, uh, th- those were typical. Louis Shelton had been a part of that, and, and before I came to town on all the ABC and that kind of uh, first Michael Jackson stuff, and he he retired from playing to get into producing and threw his his Motown stuff to me as well. So that, uh, but I played on several sessions, you know, a bunch of sessions with him. He was still doing sessions uh, enough for me to play with him. Uh, I loved playing with Larry. Uh, I just learned so much with the, playing with Larry and Louie. They were uh, fantastic. And uh, same with David T. Walker. We were all trying to figure out how he was thinking because he was just so uh, brilliant in uh, the way he would use the guitar to do things that guitars didn't usually do. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know about other pairings. I, I wish there were more pairings uh, these days, you know, usually when we do rhythm. It's just a quartet, and uh, you don't right. get to have that luxury of there being two guitars. You know, that's when um, you recall that's kind of fun on the uh, if we ever get one of these award shows that has two guitars. Uh, it's right. fun to hear right. the whole whole rhythm section rocking along. You know, that's uh, you kind of know what part to, to grab when you can hear who's who's taking what territory. Right, yeah, like you know, with David, you know, with David Foster and Friends, that's that's a prime example of that. Exactly, yeah. You get the whole. It's like a record when we play those things. So what a what great gigs those are to do. Hey, careful! That might catch on, man. We don't want to let that out. <laughs> that's right. I want to don't <laughs> put those uh, sequencer programmers out of business. <laughs> when when did you first when did you first meet David Foster? You know, I think we met uh, when he was a se- he was just coming in as a session player, and uh, so we were in the trenches together. Him on piano and me on uh, guitar. Uh, Mac Davis comes to mind. Some of those kind of sessions we were doing back then, rhythm rhythm dates. Right. Right. Well, uh, and and then you mean you were you've been out with uh, uh, Lyle Lovett, right? Uh, you've toured with Lyle and then done, done his recordings, right? Yeah, yeah. I met uh, I met Lyle in 1990, and I've uh, and that, that was a great uh, meeting. It was on a Grateful Dead tribute album, and he did one song on it. And I met him there, and then uh, he started uh, calling me for his record albums, which were generally half um, Nashville guys and half LA guys, but always recording, usually recording in L.A. And right. that's been a great, his his musical uh, breadth is uh, mighty, and his songwriting is uh, so interesting. It's always great to be on the, on the team putting together a track with Lyle. 
he's a guy that hires most of what you hear on the, uh, live so that we're actually making the sounds as it goes down and most of the live built right. vocals as well. Wow, well, it means I mean what a what a concept, you know, and, and today's artists they, they you know, they tend to manipulate things and change things. Yeah. Yeah, Lyle tends to want it all to have happened in a single statement and uh, have his choice be a choice of which take seemed to be the best for the song rather than which performance uh, of each person done separately. He, he, you know, you get to hear it all at once. Everybody uh, gets to base out their comments uh, musically uh, into the context that's actually there. Great. Right. Hey, uh, I want to hear about some of these uh, strange in instruments you play, Dean. We will be right back with legend Dean Parks. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to TimDolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you've found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit mosguitars.com or their Facebook page, mozeguitars.com, 619-698-1185. Have you ever wondered what it's like to record on a Grammy award-winning album? Have you ever wondered what it's like to play in front of a stadium crowd? Have you ever wondered what it's like to be on a world tour? I'm Jackie Bertoni, and I've played with the who's who in the music industry, and I've toured the world. Come join my world behind the velvet rope and get into the groove on Jackie's Groove. Live 2 p.m. Mondays and available 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com.
We are with the great Dean Parks. That's the Victor Krauss album, number two. And, man, I love love that record. Um, I love that, too. Dean, That's a great... I mean, you, you just... It, it just grows. It just keeps going. And, and the way you layered that is just ridiculous, man. Thank you. Yeah, that was great fun to do. I think we did that whole record in four days. Wow. I mean, you pull out some, you've got some amazing instruments. Can uh, Not just, you know, letting people know you for your guitar and your acoustic playing and know that you've played uh, clarinet and alto and tenor and, and things like that, and, and you're a producer and things. Tell everybody about some of these other weird instruments. Well, you know, uh, you just kind of collect them as you need them in a way. You know, you get the mandolins, uh, you, you need a need to have uh, a mandolin as a studio player and a 12-string acoustic, and then you figure out, well, there's dobro. That would be nice. So you buy a dobro and uh, then hear Ry Cooter on a, on a Weisenborn acoustic and look for one of those, and it's just a slowly expanding thing. Um, it's a thing called a Del Vecchio, which is like a Brazilian dobro, and, uh, mm. and then like a quattro, which is a Mexican or South American instrument. I actually don't know the origin, but uh, um, all those little guitars. Uh, you know, they're, they're kind of two kinds of sessions. Uh, like for films, for instance, it's either you're trying to get the typical sound, you know, a typical blues solo, a typical acoustic guitar part, or something completely unique. And... Uh, so it's for those completely unique times when it comes handy sometimes to have a balalaika standing by and you can put a little finger slide on it and get a sound that you can't actually figure out where it came from except it's musical, it sounds good because it's a good instrument, but used in a different way. So, uh, you know, I've got, I've got uh, about five trunks of about a dozen instruments in each and uh you know found a nylon string bass guitar in germany mm. or hutch hutchinson found it for me and i grabbed it um nice. you know it's just uh it's just fun to get things that you use once in a blue moon uh a little a turkish symbus that i uh, used on one of victor's uh, on that victor kraus album kind of a little 12 string uh, banjo y kind of a thing built on a Turkish, uh, with a Turkish mess kit, basically. The bowl of it is the bowl of a Turkish uh, military mess, mess kit. Um, so, you know, in any, uh, any port in a storm, as far as the instrument that's going to get something quirky when they're looking for something quirky, it could go anyway. But that's part of the fun of it, you know. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. I mean, you know, every time I'm on a session with you and uh, I see you, I I know that I me me personally can be relaxed. And and um, years ago, you gave me some advice that actually changed me and helped me for the better. And um, if you were to, you know, give give these young kids advice, what would you tell them? Um, advice on what handling the session once you got to get the call or no or just in general oh well let's see these days uh, make make friends with the click and make friends with the tuner um, and find your voice in all the musical genres that you're interested in and I don't mean just playing a typical kind of thing find out what your favorite version of that thing is and work on that because then you're working on two things you're working on fulfilling the requirements of a professional call where you're asked to play you know a, a banjo part or a melody on a nylon string guitar or a, a jazz solo or a country solo but you're also putting some artistry into it because you've developed a style that you're comfortable with that takes your uh, strengths and uh, puts them to the forefront and uh, lets you have a voice and have fun with it and make it uh, lyrical. And you're actually contributing to the uh, 
to, to the whole musical event. That's great advice. Absolutely great advice. And I've noticed that, you know, when you play a song, you know, your parts, you know, basically make that song, even though you yourself may think you're, you're, you're doing, you know, you're layering and stuff. But I've always felt that you, when you play, I, you should get songwriters every damn time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice to say. That brings up uh, one um, quality of session players, and I think you'll agree, is that when we're there um, as a rhythm section, make, put, putting the foundation under an existing song that we just heard for the mm-hmm. first time, we are arrangers. You are arranging a drum part and coming up with a drum pattern that's unique to that song, uh, that fits that song like a little glove. And I'm doing the same with, I think, the keyboard player and the bass player, they're all arrangers. You know, is the bass going to play it as a clipped thing? Is he going to play, you know, eighth note root notes on everything? Or is he going to space it out and make it melodic? All of that uh, affects how all of us are going to come up with another part. So, right. I, th- I think I think those are the successful, really successful rhythm tracks. Because mo- mo- I'd say in my situation, probably ninety percent of the time, the roles of the instruments are not really well defined yet. When we get a song to right. play in the studio, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we're working off and, uh, chord sheets or a, or a little cheat sheet we just made uh, when, when we're learning the song, or getting you know, a chord sheet with a few signature. Uh, licks and uh, you know pushes and whatever rhythmically, but otherwise we're we're des- we're designing a track for that song. That's part of the fun of it. And I think my arranging days, uh, arranging for jazz band in high school and college, uh, and on record sessions, I think it contributes to that because often you'll find the most effective part is the simple part that. Uh, provides another little melody. And, and as often it's not fast or technically, uh, it could be, but it doesn't have to be uh, technically difficult. Right. To, to make it, uh, you know, make the statement or make, make the song uh, make sense. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes it's hey, taking Dean. something. Yeah. I'm sorry. While this segment is it's winding down quick, um, can, can you tell everybody if if you'd like uh, how to, they can get a, get a hold of you? Oh yeah, uh, check my uh, website, which uh, I've, it's cleverly named DeanParks.com. <laughs> and there's uh, two. There's basically it's a pretty simple site. One is the discography, which is linked to uh, AllMusic.com, so it's fairly current, and uh, a contact. And uh, that'll reach me by email. Well, I mean, it's listen. It's such a great honor uh, to have you on the show. I uh, promise me you'll come back and do a, a second segment because you have so much that you've contributed to this world and changed the world. And uh, it's just my honor. Well, it's my honor to be uh, interviewed by one of the world's great greatest musicians, and it's. Uh, your, um, musicians of your caliber, and there are not that many, uh, is one of the bonuses of doing this kind of work. I get to play with you guys, and it uh, just makes it all so uh, easy and fun. Thank you, Dean Parks. You've been listening to Vinyl Night, powered by Intertalk Radio. Make it your vinyl night. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com Have you ever wondered what it's like to record on a Grammy award-winning album? Have you ever wondered what it's like to play in front of a stadium crowd? Have you ever wondered what it's like to be on a world tour? I'm Jackie Bertoni, and I've played with the who's who in the music industry, and I've toured the world. Come join my world behind the velvet rope and get into the groove on Jackie's Groove. Live 2 p.m. Mondays and available 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. 
Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit MoesGuitars.com or their Facebook page. M-O-Z-E Guitars.com. 619-698-1185. Hi, this is Rob Barnett, CM and founder of VinVillage.com and the Wine and Dine Show on Vin Village Radio. Do you have a wine, event, product, or service to promote? Then contact VinVillage.com to reach thousands of wine lovers across the country. Vin Village connects like-minded wine enthusiasts with unique and exclusive wines, events, products, and services. To learn more, contact us on VinVillage.com. Vin Village is where wine lovers connect. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on InterTalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real-time ADR work, remote recording and overdubbing, and it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high-quality audio and video connection over the Internet for all of your production needs. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on InterTalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear.